Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Hi, how are you doing today? I am your host, Rich. Here we have Rich TV Live with a very special guest, Charlie Regan. How are you doing today, Charlie? Just dandy. How are you doing, Rich? Very excited to have you on the show today. We've actually, our community has been talking about Nerds on Site Inc. for quite some time, and we're excited to learn more about the company. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got involved with Nerds on Site. Sure. I used to buy my personal computers from a couple of fellows, David Redekop and John Harborenko, who worked at Future Shop. Okay. And one day David came to me and said, uh, you know, my buddy and I were thinking of starting a company to, instead of having them drag everything into a big box store to be fixed, going to them. I said, well, good idea. What's the name? I'm a firm believer that 85% of your marketing message should be in the name of the company. And he said, nerds on site. I said, well, that sounds like something I would bankroll for sure. So uh, threw a couple of bucks and I stopped around every now and then. After six years, they had a great business in London, Ontario. And uh, I came on board to uh, just help expand, propagate the brand. And so within 18 months, we were coast to coast in Canada and started up in another couple of countries. So wow. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that we really like this deal is that we see the need. You know, we live in a world where, especially now, because so many people are spending so much time at home, we need to our technology. And sometimes, myself, I use technology every day. I get very frustrated with technology, and it would be nice if I had a person or a team or a company I could call and say, "Hey, I'm having a problem. Could you come here and help me?" and and, and, and that's one of the reasons why I really found an affinity to your company. Can you tell us a little bit about what some of your main goals are for 2021 for Nerds on Site Inc.? Certainly. It's going to be a, a great year for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, our fiscal ends in May, and we're probably going to flip that over to a uh, calendar. But we're, of course, branching out into the states in a much bigger way than we have before. Wow. We're in a, about 12, 15 states at the moment, and we're about to, with M&A strategies in play, expand that quite dramatically. And we're, we're definitely looking to become primary nerd for players like you. Our sweet spot, of course, is the SME space. 90% of the jobs and or I should say 70 to 85% of the jobs in every country. And most importantly, about 95% of the companies registered in every country. So our fixation is that player, five to 500 people specifically. We do have large enterprise players, as many as 60,000 people, but that's what we market to. That's what we go for. We have Soho and residential as well, but the bulk of our business is that specific, passionate, enthralled sector in the economy. And all of our nerds are the same. They're SMEs. They're going to market to serve and service and please. That's great. I love what you guys are doing. And I love your revenue growth for a relatively small company. You guys have pretty explosive revenue, 2.8 million in revenue in Q3 2021. That's what you just recently announced. Can you go through this news with us and give us and the viewers that are watching an idea of what the total revenue projections are for 2021? Well, we're going to be up um, a little more than uh, I'm going to say in the 10 to 11 million for the fiscal. Great. Um, we're, we're looking for uh, about 74 to 76% is monthly revenue. So it's month over month. And that sector is the one that we're focused on, specifically the cybersecurity space, where we have a proprietary offering that we're just bringing to market now. Wow. And that is, uh, it literally is the key to locking down criminals that get inside your system. We don't call them black hats. We don't call them bad actors. They are criminals, very well-funded, very well-orchestrated, and very creative. 
Our job is to make sure they don't get your stuff, even if they break into your servers, your cameras, your photocopiers, your computers. Our job is to make certain that nothing goes back to them, not one piece of data. And that's what our proprietary offering is. Don't talk to strangers is patented in the European Union as well as the States in Canada. Wow, that's impressive. And we just, we've seen some, just recently, the, the pipeline that got hacked by cybersecurity right. and they had to pay a ransom. Yeah. I mean- And it, ransomware, yeah. there are some nations now that are outlawing ransomware. They do not want companies paying this, which is sound thinking and sound policy. Very difficult to impose. Let's yeah. face it, most companies don't want anyone knowing that they've been breached. Yes. Let's face it, you and I would not necessarily like to deal with a company who's allowed our personal information to be stolen from them. So Absolutely. our job is to help people feel more comfortable being open, honest, and direct with their nerds so we can first make certain they can't be breached. And second, if they are, ambulatory care is what we focus on first, get you safe and back up to speed instantly, and then we go about the process of making certain that never again can that happen to you. So yeah, it is global and it's growing faster than any other business. We all know it's about $7 trillion a year, wow. cyber crime. That's the third largest national economy on the face of the earth after US and China. This is not going away. No, and nobody really likes to talk about it, but I, oh. I like the fact that you guys are on top of this now. I want to speak about this partnership with Staples. This is huge. Yes. Uh, it an is. Exclusive partnership with Staples Canada to bring IT solutions to its small business customers. Can you give the viewers an idea of what the market size for small business IT solutions is and how this will help generate more revenue for nerds on site? Right. Uh, we're just ramping up now to execute. Uh, there are two actual uh, Staples programs. First one is our full-blown consultative and full tech support system for their SME. They call them preferred SME clients. There's about 1.7 million SME uh, companies and clients across the Staples network, but they have a preferred network of about 350 to 370,000 players. So we're just launching that now and shortly, we're beginning a pilot project as well in within the next month to take project B to the market where Staples, they'll sell perhaps a million of just printers in one year. They believe that about 5% of those clients would like some help setting them up. So setting up new computers, new routers, new printers. And so we're the team that will go out and install and set that up. Nice. So we have two projects, both of which are underway and about to launch. So we're excited about, you know, the close of this year calendar and the start of next. COVID has had, as we all know, a dramatic impact on all brick and mortar operations. Yes. But Staples is doing a masterful job of pivoting. And as we move forward with vaccination, their stores will all once again open up full time and uh, kick in the gear. So yeah, we're very excited about those revenue opportunities for yeah, sure. That sounds exciting. Staples is a really <laughs> big, well-known well name here in Canada and very professional. Yes. So when you have an exclusive partnership with Staples, that kind of puts you on a higher level. When, when I think about your, your, your business, Geek Squad comes to mind, right? Yep. Now, would they be considered one of your competitors? If so, uh, who are some of your IT solution space competitors in Canada and what sets you up apart from them? Because when I think about you guys, I kind of think about Geek Squad that you can go to Best Buy and you can take your computers and they'll fix them there, or you can call them and they'll come to your home. Is that where this idea originated from? Are you guys different? Are you guys similar? Well, actually, the, both companies started uh, within months of each other. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. But uh, the the morphing on the Geek Squad front has been towards home entertainment, which is the bulk mm -hmm. of their business now. They used to be, as you say, in all those tech sectors, but uh, that's the bulk now of their business book. 
we, uh, I've got an expression used for years in all the companies I've got, and competition is good, just not good enough. Our job is to learn from, to watch, to assess, and to the best of our ability, investigate. Our focus is better in class. So we're constantly searching for the better in class. We don't use the terminology best in class because some people then begin to rest on their laurels. We're constantly looking to learn. So we know that across Canada, there's no branded player that has this offering that we have coast to coast. But there are many incredibly strong and I'm going to call them powerful regional players that are doing a great job. <laughs> we consider all of them M&A prospects. We are looking for expansion purposes to actually go after some of these firms that have that kind of a reputation. We have almost 91,000 five-star uh, five star ratings wow. inside our company. And there aren't many companies that have that many ratings in total but we're very close to 91,000. So Impressive. we're looking for players who have that kind of a client value proposition. And we firmly believe that our client audits are our value proposition. What someone just says recently said about us, that's what we take to market. So yeah, we're, uh, we're not saying we're better than anyone. We're learning and we're pushing hard to be better than we were yesterday afternoon at four o'clock. That's our focus. I like that. Now, in order to be a successful business and a successful organization, you need a successful team. Who are the key members of your team that are helping nerds on site become a huge success? Certainly. We've got uh, an inverted pyramid in our business model. Of course, client is on top. The next level and most important level in our, in our triangle is the nerd. We call them primary nerds. That primary nerd often has secondary and project team members as well. If you go down the pyramid from there, you wind up with pod leaders, passionate, orchestrated, driven geographical zones where we have identified a handful of leaders, two, three leaders in each area. These are the folks who, uh, who do their very best to have weekly breakfast meetings with the team, virtual or real, just to keep everyone in the loop and uh, aware of what's going on in their region and opportunities for help and assistance, which is very important. Just below that is our administration team. This is that small group of seven folks who do a masterful job with the help of our ERP system. We're constantly every 60 seconds updating all of our numbers so that every team member globally sees exactly what's going on inside the company, who's doing what with what client, what are the issues they're resolving and how the client feels about how we did that kind of thing. And at the bottom is JDC. That's John David Charlie. Okay, we're the ones who uh, quite literally, we don't support, but we do our very best to involve and in any way, shape, or form that we can, assist or leverage. We, of course, have a great board that's doing a terrific job for us. We're, we're very fortunate there as well. And then, of course, we have some outside uh, partnerships that we work closely with. You know, you mentioned Staples, that's one, but we have lots of uh, marketplace, you know, the, the Googles, the, the Microsofts, the Fibernetics, the, we have a, a, an entire Taylor development team in our, our software as a service division. It's a related party company, but it's called Ready Aim Fire Enterprising. And we provide all tailored software. So whatever the client needs, but it runs anywhere from, well, web-based uh, time and attendance software called Time Well Scheduled, all the way up to a full-blown SME ERP system called My Business OS, My Business Operating System. So we're very very fortunate that we have great talent. The talent that we have, we, uh, we appreciate and we attract many who have certifications. But to be frank, we're looking for street cert players, people who in the environment of the client are able to deliver and do so in a way that pleases. You know, we, we focus on the three F or the three P's, I should say, pleasurable, profitable, pleasurable, productive, and profitable technology solutions to our client. 
So we're, uh, we're always looking for folks who have the ability to do in the work environment that which they uh, are either enthralled and enthused about or certified to deliver. I like that. Our community here at Rich TV Live is global. Uh, we have over 100 countries that watch our show. And wow. our community loves disruptive technologies. They love disruptive technologies. And this is a disruptive technology. And as the world becomes more technology enhanced and technology is now moving at a faster pace than we've ever seen, this is a huge need. And one of the key elements for our community when we evaluate companies is share structure. Can you go over your share structure with nerds on site and how the company plans to attract more institutional and retail investors? Sure, sure. We've got a, a maybe a two-phase program. As, uh, as you know, we're pretty tightly held. There's only about 86 million shares and Great. insiders, I believe, own, well, in excess of 55%. Wow. Phase one is quite literally to increase our retail shareholder base and obviously create more liquidity for them. But we're looking to increase with a few initiatives we're involved in right now to uh, raise our profile. We're a Canadian company that tends to be Canadian in nature, and we need to do a better job of doing that. So we believe the investment community is just beginning to get a sense of or a feel for what we're doing, not just growing, but the growth acquisition focus that we have as well. And that, uh, that could make a huge difference. And then phase two, of course, is to uplist on NASDAQ. And we're looking for sponsorship coverage with U.S. investment banks so that we can get some analysis. We can get some more data out there for folks to make intelligent decisions. We do believe that that will increase dramatically our, our share volume trade on a daily basis. But that, we know, is kind of key to uh, attracting institutional players eventually. Wow. If there was one thing you'd want shareholders to know about nerds on site today, what would it be? We're a quiet Canadian personality organization. We're not personality centric. We're system centric so that we know everything we do is not going to be on the shoulders of someone to execute. It's going to be on across the breadth of the team itself. So if somebody, you know, for whatever reason, slip slides away, we're, we're in a position to make certain we still maximize. But we are going to get better as a Canadian, quiet, uh, sometimes even shy or reticent Canadian organization to share more of the messaging so people are more plugged in to what's going on uh, and as excited as we are, get excited as we are about the future. <laughs> Well, I think you came to the right place here at Rich TV Live. We make a living by helping companies like yourselves get more exposure and helping tell your story in a entertaining and educational way. And I feel like interviews like this will really help to tell your story because to me, this is an undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed company with growing revenue, reasonably tight share structure with a product that is in need. So with great partnerships with staples. And like you said, you're in the process of looking at acquiring your growth and using a merger and acquisition strategy to acquire your growth. And those are the types of businesses that we really like and we can really sink our teeth into. And it's early. The price is right. Yeah. It's early. And you're like just starting to tell your story to the market. If a shareholder wanted to learn more about your company, get in contact with you, um, ask a question, what would be the best way for them to reach you? Best way is IR at nerdsonsite.com. And I get copied on all those messagings. So I can and have participated in the response from our IR team. And some of uh, not just myself, but a couple of my partners as well will get involved in answering questions, comments, queries that come our way. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. The CEO of Nerds On Site, Charlie Regan. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Now, before we say goodbye, I just want to remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. Invest in the best, 
the best is blessed. And we love to bring you guys early stage companies first. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, everybody. If you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe if you're alive. This is Rich, your host from Rich TV Live with Charlie Regan, the CEO of Nerds On Site, wishing you have a nice day.